I want to talk with to you uh, Jesus, about Jesus Christ, our high priest. Jesus is our high priest, which means he intercedes for us. He go, he's between us, us, as it were, and God the Father. And he offers sacrifices. High, the high priest always offered sacrifices for the people. But Jesus offered himself. Uh, all the, the, the high priests uh, in um, Israel offered animals, uh, innocent animals, maybe animals who weren't so willing. But Jesus was willing to give himself for us. And let's explore uh, John 17 as much as we have time to explore and see what God gives for you, what God has given for you. God has done something wonderful for you. Now, the world does not acknowledge this, but I want you to acknowledge what God has done for you and then don't have a worldliness about you. Don't have a worldly attitude about it. The world is always pulling on you. And uh, you can just take any day of your life and you'll find where the world is pulling you toward its orbit. But you don't want to go there. You, you want to stand firm and allow what Jesus Christ has done for you. And because he has done it, there is a continuation of that right now, every day in your life. You and I might do something for someone and it has an immediate end or an end down the road. But what Jesus Christ does and says, it continues. Jesus, Jesus' love for you continues. It doesn't end when you stop acting right. You know, sometimes we're through with people when they don't do what we want them to do. You know, I'm talking about some of the ain'ts, I mean the saints here. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at, at John chapter 17, verse 1. It says, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Now, when, when the writer John tells us Jesus spoke these words, lifted up, his eyes to heaven and said, let's find out what he's talking about. So in order to do that, I have to go to John 16 uh, and let's look at verse, uh, verses 31 through 33. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, has now come. I like it, that verbiage, that you will be scattered. The hour is coming. Yes, has now come. You will be scattered, each to his own, and leave me alone. Now, there's a lot I can say about being scattered, each to his own, because that is the time in which we are living. It's, it's just that those of us who are here have resisted that, being scattered to our own. I don't have time to get into that fully, but, but I want you to listen carefully. And Jesus says, and will leave me alone. And so the strategy of the devil is to, is to scatter you to your own that you might leave Jesus. Following your own will in your own way. But this is what Jesus says. And, and they will leave him alone. Uh, he said, and yet I am not alone. Even though you leave me, I am not alone. I love this. Because the Father is with me. Now, uh, you, it's important that you and I internalize the Father is with me. It's, it's important that we believe that also about us. You may feel lonely. You may feel rejected. You may feel like people haven't treated you right. And perhaps they have not. But Jesus is with you and the Father is with you. And when you have the Holy Spirit of God, that means the Father and the Son are with you. Listen. Listen. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. So what Jesus is saying, don't look for peace in the world system. Don't look for peace there. He says, your peace is found in me. And so that means the restoring of that which has been broken is found, put together again, in Christ. And that, that peace is the word Irene, Irene, or Irene, we say. All right. In the world, you will have tribulation. So what is he, he is saying to the disciples and thus to us, that in the world, you will have tribulations. Where do we get this thing from? I don't know what's happening. Where do we get that from? When I would go home as a boy, go home and say something uh, nutty, my dad would ask, where do you get that from, son? 
And, and he said, I know you didn't get that here. Where have you been? <laughs> That's true. But, but dad wasn't asking for information. Dad was teaching me. And, and if I didn't straighten up, he said, he'd always say, straighten up and fly right, son. And so if I didn't straighten up, I was going to fly wrongly. <laughs> and he was going to be the cause of it. In the world, you will have tribulation, believers. In the world, you will have tribulation. In the world, you will have tribulation. What part of in the world you will have tribulation don't you understand? Now listen. But I love, I love the way Jesus changes the direction. He'll change the direction of your life. He has changed the direction of our lives. He will change the direction. In the world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Oh, laugh. Enjoy yourself. Be of good cheer. Exult in me. Why? I have overcome the world. He's told us, in me you're going to have peace, so I've overcome the world. I am your place of safety. I am your place of safety. The world system is not our place of safety. Wow. So Jesus had spoken these words, and then after having spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Notice uh, in so many of the passages that Jesus would say, it's not my time. It's not my hour. My hour has not come. My hour has not come. So it, he came to this place where he says, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he says, Father, the hour has come. There is an hour that has come for us. And I believe that this is a time and uh, we don't have time to fully explore it, but I believe our hour has come. I, bl I believe the hour of this fellowship has come. I believe that your personal hour has come. And this is what Jesus is saying to us today. The hour has come. Glorify your son. Magnify your son. Put a spotlight on your son. Honor your son. That your son may do the same. Glorify you. So our responsibility is to do for God what he has done for us. It doesn't mean that God, now God is not sitting up there saying, I want y'all to bless me now. I want you to glorify me, baby. No, he's not doing that. God is not a needy God. But our responsibility is to give back to God in kind what he has given to us. Amen. 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 And so he says here, uh, as you have given him the son, Jesus Authority over all flesh. This is the Jesus we serve. Let's don't stop serving Jesus for other, other things, other stuff. It doesn't matter how much it glitters. It's fool's gold. It's called iron pyrite. So don't go for that which glitters. Don't go for that which makes you feel okay uh, for the short term. He says... As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should. Now listen, he, he, God the Father, Jehovah, Yahweh, gave Jesus authority over all flesh. That means if Jesus says you're a crisper critter, that's it. <laughs> he gave authority over all flesh. Now notice what he says. That he, Jesus, should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Why should we forsake the eternal for the temporary? No, don't ever forsake the eternal for the temporal or the temporary. He gave, he gave him authority over all flesh that Jesus should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And, don't you love the way God speaks, right? And this is eternal life. And this is eternal life. What is eternal life? Well, it's this, it's that. He said, no, let me tell you, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom he sent. So it's not complicated. You don't need a, a, sign, a, a degree in nuclear engineering. Two things. Know God. Know the Son. This is eternal life. The Father gave Christ authority over all flesh. That Christ should give eternal life to as many as the Father had given him. And this is eternal life, he's saying. And now let me uh, sort of reiterate that and, and sort of bring it down to where we know, to what we understand. It is knowing God, the Father, and the Son intimately. It's a knowing. 
Now, now don't, don't go crazy here, but it's like knowing, it's like when Adam knew Eve. They became one flesh. When he came together with his wife, Eve, they became one flesh. So God says, I want to be one with you. I don't want to be here and you're over there. I want to be one with you. Now, no, notice what this says. This, is, this, this makes you want to shout, right? It makes you want to shout. I think somebody composed a song like that old bad rascal did. It makes you want to shout or something. But he, he had probably grown up in church. Verse 4 says, now this, I want you to hold that because God wants you to know him intimately. God has an intimate relationship with us through Christ. He says in verse 4, Jesus says, I have glorified you on the earth. He's praying. He's praying for himself, but not in a selfish way, not like the television ad thing that says, well, I used to do all this stuff for everybody. I did this for them, and I did it for them, and, and, but now I do for myself. That wasn't the attitude here. It's not, well, i got to help me first. That's not what Jesus is saying. But G what Jesus is doing is he is talking to God the Father about the, his relationship with God the Father and what he has been given to do because Jesus knows that what he gives to you is as he is forever. What he gives you is eternal. It's not that temporary thing. No, okay, Jesus gave me salvation, but I've got to work and dig and keep it, or if I don't, I lose it. No, no, no. What Jesus did for you is eternal. What Jesus did for you is forever. And this is what this prayer is about. Jesus has given you some forever. Hallelujah. Now, now act like it. Notice what he says. I have glorified you on the earth. What Jesus is saying, I magnified you. My life was to magnify you. My life was to honor you. So, so likewise, what Jesus has given you is that responsibility to honor God, to magnify him through your life. Your life is not just for you. It's not so that you can decorate yourself with beautiful clothing and eat the best food every day. Sometimes just a good old bowl of beans is just the best. I know y'all looking at me strange. I'm just saying, yeah, I, I do enjoy uh, get going to get my hamburger from my plate, favorite place. Start with a B and end with a three. I love going to get my Bubba's 33. I love getting the best steak that I can afford, go to Texas Roadhouse or, or go to the Longhorn. I, I love to get that. But a good bowl of beans sometimes beats them all. I'm just saying life is not just so you can, you can, you know, you know, dine yourself, you know. You know, I heard a preacher say one time, he says, Paul Buffett said he buffeted himself. He didn't say he buffets himself. <laughs> your, your life. It's to glorify God. Are, how are you honoring God? Do you really honor God every day? Do you magnify Jesus every day? And he says, now, I have finished the work. You know, he's still here. I have. Listen how he speaks in the past tense because he is so resolute, all of that is behind him. He is resolute. He is going for it. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finish the work. I've magnified. That's what he's saying. I've, I've magnified you on the earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. And now, oh, Father, glorify me, magnify me together with yourself. Honor me with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. And what Jesus is not saying is, we haven't had this. What Jesus is saying is, I'm going to now personally uh, be advanced into your presence. I'm going to bring my my glorified human body into your presence, a place that no human had ever gone before. This is what awaits us because what Jesus was praying about himself, he is now given to you. That's why we should not argue over these little local lots and get involved in these little local fights and, and these uh, state fights and these national fights and these world fights. We don't get involved in that stuff. Not to the degree that we do, 
Why? Because we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Right now, you're looking at a man who's on a journey. And not, just take your phone out and take a picture of yourself and look at it and say, Girl, boy, you're on your way somewhere. We are going to see God. We're going to see the Father. We're going to see the Son who purchased. We're going to see an innumerable number of angels. That's where we're going. Our high priest has gone before us. He has interceded for us. He prayed for us. Hallelujah. So let's don't get all involved, overly involved in this stuff. And I'm not, now, now he says, he says here, um, as he prays for his disciples, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. So you are here. You were brought out of that system of death. God gave you to Jesus out of the system of death. You, all of us were perishing. We were dying, dead men, dead women, walking, but dying. And God says, take this. You made it. it might seem unfair because the boy that I was playing with, I was chosen. He was left. The kids I ran around with in my neighborhood, I was taken they were left. But it's not unfair. It's God's right to choose whomever he wills. He is the only one who makes a righteous choice, not based on how good you were, but how good he was and is. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. And there's a lot to unpack there. We don't have time to unpack it. But Jesus is speaking. He says, they have kept your word. He's speaking. He's speaking like eternally. He's speaking down the road. Even right now, he looks at, at a Peter who is, who is going to backslide for a while. He, he is looking um, at uh, uh, James and John who are going to run like scared rabbits. But he can speak because of who he is and, and what he has done for us. He can speak based on the efficacy of his own blood and his life given for us. He can speak on it. I've given them your words. I've given them words of God. Can you imagine uh, having words of God to speak? He has given us words that came from heaven to speak. Words of God. That's why you don't sound like the world. You shouldn't. When you find yourself using some of the words, pr preferred words. Que lastima. What a pity. Que vergüenza. What a shame. Let's continue to look at this. I love this. This is Jesus, our high priest, praying for us. You know, he's interceding for us. There, here's God the Father, this great person, God the Father. And there, here we are back there, little feeble ones, and he's here in between. And that's what he did on the cross. He says, Father, no, let me hang up for him. He died for us. He died as us to give us eternal salvation. Listen to what he says. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, and I have given to them the words again which you have given me, and they have received them. Have you received them? And they have known, surely, that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Do you believe that God the Father sent him? This is crucial. And then he says, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but I pray for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am manifested in them. I am honored in them. I take that very seriously. Do you take it seriously that Jesus says, I am magnified in them? I am made known in them. I am honored in them. So we should never, ever risk bringing dishonor to the name of Jesus. Let me just take a minute here. I talked about, I talked earlier 
about so many Christians uh, somewhere in this earlier message, how if you can ask Christians, hey, what is your vision? And we have a multiplicity of visions. You, you notice that. You know, we got a vision. Oh, I got vision for the youth of, of America. No, 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 no. What about the church? Oh, I, I, I've got a, a vision for, for relationships. I've got a vision for marriage. Uh, I've got a vision for this or that. That's, that's the way Christians are. Uh, I've got a vision for bringing more teaching. I've got a vision for uh, representing us in Congress. Or I, I don't like it. A number of years ago, the Lord gave me a vision. And that was this. And I, when I was, I was reading in Habakkuk chapter 2, I was reading in Habakkuk chapter 2, and it was as though, I know this may sound strange to you, it was as though God wrote it for me. When I read it, it says, Habakkuk was, was talking about the Lord. He says, he says that, that, uh, uh, that the knowledge, his goal was that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And so I read that and I thought, that's for me. Because that then became my vision, my goal, is that everybody should know Jesus. Everybody should hear the name Jesus, to know who he is and what he has done for us. And so that should be our goal. It's not to do this and do that. The, the, that may be um, a mission statement. That may be how they're going to know about Jesus is through this particular mission that I'm, I'm, I'm on. But my, my vision is that the whole world would know Jesus. That, that's my, and, and that's what we must do. I know, I know there are uh, believers, Christians who have issues with Islam, and, and I do have issues with aspects of it, uh, and I can tell you about it, all those aspects uh, that I have issues with. But I don't have the issues with the people who have been captured. I don't. But let me tell you, generally speaking, they don't have all these multiplicity of visions. They all have one vision. We talk about how bad they are, but they got one vision. They want the Islamization of the world. Everything that be Islamic in the whole world. But we want marriage to be better. We want the children to be, the youth to have something to do. We want the adults to be pretty uh, okay and then we want to make sure that we got enough people in representative government. And are you getting me? Am I making somebody mad? Well, I'm not preaching good then. <laughs> are you still with me? Do you love me? Come on. So Jesus was interceding for something specific. He says, now I'm no longer in the world. Listen to his language. I am not no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one. Listen, as we are. Can you imagine? Can, you know, can you imagine the, the audacity of this kind of love? Can you imagine the audacity of this kind of praying? Let's read it again. Now I'm no longer in the world. But he's still here. But he's praying future. But these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. He knows that his sacrifice is going to do everything that God intended. Do you know that your life is going to bring about everything that God intended? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Notice here. Notice here. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. Or, or he's, it can be translated, keep them through my name, the name you've given me. Keep them through this name. That is, the name of Jesus is not just a, a name that we utter just because when we are in trouble or, or something. The name of Jesus is a keeping name, a name that will keep you from all the schemes and tricks of this world system. It will keep you on, the, on the, the right path. Now notice here. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Or I kept them through your name. 
Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. He said the only one that is lost is Judas. But the rest of them I have kept. God is keeping you. That's the prayer that God has already uttered. So stop working against the prayer of Jesus. Just live it out. Wow. And let's live it out in difficult times. In difficult times. This is what, let me finish a, a couple of things and then we're going to go somewhere else. He says, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So what Jesus is saying here is he's giving us immeasurable joy and, and he wants it to be fulfilled, find a home in you. So that no matter what goes on in your life, you're okay. I have given them your words. He says it again. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Wow. Now notice here. I want to I go back uh, to a little part of verse 11 where he says, you have, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are. And then he says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them. I've always wanted everybody to like me. I don't know about you. I've wanted everybody to like me. But everybody doesn't like me. It was a little traumatic when I realized that so many people didn't like me. Even men of the clergy didn't like me. I thought they did. I wanted them to. But you know who I want to love me and like me more? is Jesus Christ. I went to, I was invited by a very distinguished man to pray at a function. And I, he, was, he was a good man. I liked this man. But he was, he was a Muslim by, by, let's say by birth. He had always been very, very kind to me. And so I, I know how the enemy is and how the enemy wants to make you shrink back. You know, like those of you who are godly and you go on a job, you got a lot of ungodly men and you participate so you'll fit in. I don't want to fit in. I want to be just as much as a, 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 maybe an outlier in a sense as Christ was. He didn't fit in. He came to his own. His own didn't receive him. But to those who did receive him, he, he, gave, they, he gave them the authority to become sons of God. And that's where we ought to be. I went to this, this function he had invited me to, and he, he wanted me to pray. And generally, the clergy has a reputation of praying polite prayers. And so on the way over, I was asking Jesus, and I've told you the story at least twice. I was on the way, and I said, Lord, don't, don't let me get over there and shrink back and, and not mention Jesus, my Savior. And I kept saying that on the way over. And when I got over, that's all I said almost. I stood up, and I just, I, I didn't, I wanted the Holy Spirit, don't let me shrink back. And I, I wanted the man to like me. I wanted him to really continue this relationship. It was a very good one. But when I stood up, I said, Jesus. I said, Oof. And I started to say, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And, and I mentioned Jesus. I can't tell you how many, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And I, didn't, I did mention the name of Jesus. But let me say, I wanted to mention the name of Jesus, but I didn't want it to look like I was beating him with the name of Jesus. But this is what the Bible says. He has given us his word. He has given us a platform. He is giving us something to say. He is giving us something to do. We must do it. And we must not look for the world. He says the world has hated us. I wonder if the world hates you. Does the world find an affinity with you? Does the world find it with me? Am I accepted in the world system? When they are doing their things, do they like me and invite me? No, they don't invite me. Do they invite you? Are you comfortable there? Do you say, I'm going to behave when you're there? What do you call that? Jesus said in John 7, 7, the world cannot hate you to his brothers, but it hates me because I testify of its works. That I testify of it that its works are evil. 
Do you? Do you? This is what Jesus says in 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. So Jesus is not taking you out of the world, but he, he wants to keep you from the evil one. He wants to establish you and guard you from the evil one. He wants to deliver you from every evil work and preserve you for his heavenly kingdom. This is what he says about his disciples. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And he says, you are from beneath. I am from above. You're of this world. I'm not of this world. And he says, Lord, make them like us, Father. This is my prayer for you. And that you will be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And we're going to sing. And I'll come back and give you an invitation. And then we'll let you go out after the rain stops.